Welcome to NSAE Nuggets series, a series of live talks on topics relating to active aging. This live talks will take place every Tuesday and Friday at 2 p.m. here on C3A's Facebook page. You can share this live video with your family and friends too. After the live session, this video will be made available on both our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to NSAE Nugget Series. My name is Connie Lim from Agape Little Uni. This afternoon gives me great pleasure to share with you some practical tips that you can use to manage your grandchildren. Now, the circumstances faced by many grandparents has been very stressful and complicated nowadays, right? Especially during this COVID-19 lockdown period, the stress level of yours must have increased exponentially. So this afternoon, let us relax and share together how we can help one another to foster a healthy relationship with your grandchildren. So today, we are going to learn about two aspects of how we can foster a strong relationship with children and grandchildren. First, we want to understand the role of grandparents, which is very important. What is your role as grandparent? And secondly, is to identify the different temperament traits of infant and toddler. Now, today's sessions, we would like, I would like it to be more interactive. So the question that I ask you later on, feel free to just fill in your answer in the chat box so that we all can learn together. So now, why do we need to learn about the different temperament traits of the infant and toddler? Now, a better understanding of how temperaments work will help us maintain our own patience and become very positive in our attitudes. It's because it is important for us to know that different child need different stroke. So now, let us look at your role as grandparents. How has the role of a grandparents changed over the years? What do you think? In the past, how does the role of a grandparents be in the past? You want to write your answer in the chat box? What do you think a grandparents role was like in the past? Do you think they are um, loving, strict? Or what do you think has their role of a grandparents be? They are more authoritative type. They are more firm. How about now? What's the role of a grandparents? Do you have any idea what is your role of a grandparents now? You can actually type it in the chat box so that we all know now a day is how the grandparents' role is in this modern society. Yes, in the past, the role is very strict as a grandparents, but now, parent like, yes, very good. Yeah, I see that, you know, you are able to give us, a, give me some answer. Yes, nowadays we are very loving. We are more fun. We are that the playmates. You are right, exactly. Now, I want to ask you another question. Who are you in the family? What do you think? Are you a cook? Are you a tutor? Are you a housekeeper? Or are you a nanny? Or all of the above? So who are you in the family? Write it in the chat. Now type it into your Facebook comment so that we all know what is your role. Who are you in the family? Do you think you are a cook, a tutor, or a housekeeper, or a nanny, or all of the above? 
but most of them will think that they are all of the above. But let me share with you, you are the support. You are the pillar, the support of the family. So how can you be a good support? Yes, I saw Ansel is coming in, housekeeper. You think you're a housekeeper? Or the above? Yes, sometimes we felt that we do everything. In what Hokkien say, Paukaleo, do everything, you know, for our grandchildren and our children. But now, let me tell you lovingly, you are their support. So how can you be a good support to your grandchildren and your children? Trust your children can be great parents too, just like us. We've gone through a lot of trial and error when we were young as a parent. I believe if we trust your children can be great parents too, we will do a great job. So give them time and space to discover the journey of parenting. As they discover the journey of parenting, they become more and more confident just like you. So trust them that they can be a great parents too. And secondly, keep yourself updated with the best practices to handle modern children's behavior. You may check out this website. Put yourself in a training program to learn about how you can take care of your infant and toddler grandchildren. Or some articles to read to get yourself updated some resources to help you to better manage your grandchildren. And thirdly, know how children learn so you can be the meaningful support to your grandchildren's learning. And this is very important because as you know the technique better, you can actually support them much more effectively. Next, this is the key. Take a break when it is necessary. Ultimately, your grandchildren are still your children's responsibility. You are the support. Take a break like now. I believe that your grandchildren are not with you now while you are learning something. Or have a Zoom time with your friend doing a karaoke session online. And after the COVID-19, have a holiday with your friend to take a break from them. So as to recollect your emotion, so that you can actually know that uh, the responsibility of your grandchildren are their parents. Next, we will go into the different temperament traits of an infant and toddler, so that you'll be able to know them better give you a better handle of how you can manage them. Now, the first temperament trait is activity level, the amount of movement and bodily activity of an individual. And high level activity child, what do you think they look like? They look very active, so active that they run about all the time. And they get restless and distressed if you make them sit quietly for a long period of time. Do you have grandchildren like that at your house? So what can you do? Write down on the Facebook comment. What will you normally do with children with such with so active and cannot sit still for a long period of time? You ask them to stay quiet and you wouldn't. So what can you do? What can you do with these children who are so active? Any tips, grandparents? We can provide more opportunity for active play. Let them move around from time to time. Yes, tire them out with things they like to do. Agree. That's a very good idea. Expense their energy because they have a lot of energy. They shouldn't have a lot of energy that you need to expense on. Right? 
and involve them with your household chore now as you cannot go out of the house so often. Why do I say so? There's a story that a grandma told me that, he's, that she said that she will never, never, never allow the grandson to go into the kitchen. Or one day, she forgot to actually close the kitchen gate. And the grandson walked into the kitchen with his favorite toys and put it inside the washing machine. And there his washing machine will always wash his laundry and the grandson's favorite toys. And it happens many times. So when he comes to the class, he tells me, he said, uh, Connie, what can I do with my grandson? He said, why don't you cure his curiosity? Bring him to the kitchen, show him the washing machine, and tell him, how, why, what is this for? And ask him to help you to put the laundry in the washing machine. And after a while, the grandson understood how the washing machine worked, and he never put the toys inside the washing machine again. So during this COVID-19 lockdown, explore the different appliances in the household, bring along the little one and show them what you have. Okay. How about those low level activity child? They are quiet, they are calm, they move very slowly. They eat slowly, they move slowly. So what can you do? They are often named slow poke. Dilly Dally Princess and Dilly Dally Prince. I believe in your household, you will have this kind of children too. So what do you do with them? Put it on the Facebook comment and let's learn together. What do you do? How can we help? these children, what can you do for them? It's sometimes very frustrating if you are going out and they are not ready and you will scream at them. Besides screaming, besides scolding them, what can you do? You can give them extra time. Yes, motivate them with a gentle voice and do it alongside with them. Yeah. Great. Give them time to do it. And when they are doing well and move along with you, you praise them. You set yourself extra time too. If you need to leave at 10 o'clock, 9.30, get your get a grandchild ready. And tell him that you're going to leave at 10 o'clock and what, what he or she has to do. So that will ease each other anxiety when you need to move out. Again, you're right. Let them move at their own pace. Do not rush them. Because this is their pattern already inbuilt in the system. So the next one we can go is the biological rhythm, regularity. They sleep well, they take regular nap, they toilet train easily. Well, what can you do? This kind of children, everybody loves it. You just need to observe the child's behavior. And generally they are easy to manage. Their routine are very predictable. They sleep at the right timing. At one o'clock, they take an afternoon nap. At three o'clock, when they wake up, they need their milk. So they are very orderly and easy to manage child. What about those irregularity ones? They, their sleeping habits are chaotic. They wake up several times at night and tire you out. And their bowel movements are unpredictable. The minute you want to get out of the house and the child starts to pull and you need to change the child. So sometimes it gets you frustrated. But this is their biological rhythm. So what can you do? 
What will you normally do when this kind of children in your household? Can you help them to become better? Can you make their sleeping habit more regular? Because the child can be trained to sleep through the night if not pick up every time he or she cries. When a child cries and you know that she's hungry, you fat her. When the diaper is short, you change. And after that, leave he or she alone for a while. And after a period of time, they will know that night time is sleeping time. And they can actually drag their sleeping hour longer. Toilet train is a little bit tricky. Now, you usually take a longer time until the child is more aware of the internal sensation. So that requires you to be patient. Approachable and withdrawal child. How the child responds to a new situation. Approachable one. Respond positively to a new environment. Smile to every stranger. They're so cute, right? Because they are so loving and so fun. And they plunge into an, an activity immediately. You don't need to call for them. They will just run to the group and have fun. So what can you do? Well, caregiver generally has no problem managing them because they can easily mingle with any one of them. But when you need to guide them, is some do's and don'ts on safety with stranger. How about the withdrawal child? Typically very cautious about exploring new object, cries when stranger approaches them. I believe that a few of the children are like that in your household too. They're likely to push away the new toys or spit up food for the first few times. So what can you do, grandparents? Any tips for us to all learn together? Write it on the Facebook comment. Type it through so that we all can learn from one another. Typically where we draw, speed out the food the first few times you feed the child. How can we help them? With your experience, I believe you have a lot to share. You be patient with this initial negative reaction. Yes, you encourage them and do it so, so that they were, we are doing it safe and good for them. Yes, we need to encourage them to feed, especially when it comes to food that are very new to them. Let them play with the food for a while so that they get used to the taste. And after a while, they can get used to the food that you want them to eat. Encourage them. I like it. Do not pressure the child to make immediate positive adjustment. If not, it will turn negative. The child will even hit the food the next time you want to feed it. So have fun with them. Enjoy the new food that you want to introduce to them and help them to, get, help them to adjust slowly. How about adaptability, child? How quickly or slowly the child adapts to change in routine? Or overcome an initial negative response. A high level adaptability, adaptability child. They are just easily and willing to learn. Very fast, they get things done and they learn. So what you need to do is to give a lot of encouragement to them. And the more encouragement you give, the better they become. How about the low level adaptability, adaptability child? It takes a long time to adapt to change. So what can you do? 
when they take a long time to adapt to change. For example, they are used to sleeping in your master room and you want to change that sleeping place to the guest room. So what can you do with this low level adaptability child? Any tips, grandparents, that we can do to help them to adjust? What can we do to help this low adaptability child to adjust? How can we encourage them to move from the master room to the guest room to take their nap? Do it with them a few times. Yes, very good. Grandparents, you are very skillful. I can see that. Be patient with them. Have fun, do it a few times with them. Give them a number of exposure to the change. And slowly and surely, they will adjust to it. The quality of mood. Well, this is challenging for some. Positive mood. Not a, not a problem, right? Smile and laugh very often. And fussing and crying are very infrequent. These children, great to have. Positive mood usually creates positive response from the caregiver. It's just no problem at all. How about the negative mood child? They tend to fast or complain a lot. They show little or no open expression of pleasure. I believe you will have a lot of grandchildren having some minor fights, sibling rivalry, fighting with one another. So what can you do? Coco, Jeje, Papa, you see, Ah Gong, you see. So what can you do, Ah Gong? What can you do, Papa? Any tips? To help this negative mood child to be less a complainer, how can we help them? Grandparents, I believe you have a lot of this experience. How can we help this negative mood child to slowly move to a positive mood? Maintain your posture, respond cheerfully, distract the kid with other activity. Excellent. Distracting the kid with other activity is really a good so things to do because when a kid is easily distracted, some of them you can exchange and negotiate with these children and help them to maintain their mood better. But do not ignore their fasting or complaint. Help them to sort out their emotion. Help them to sort out their complaints. And you offer the alternative. I like it. How about the sensitivity threshold? What can you do? Those children who have high level of sensitivity threshold, they don't bother about the irritating stimuli. So what can you do? Easy, right? But you need to check on them regularly, especially the infant and toddler. Because when they poo, they don't bother. And you forgot to change them, their bottom will have full of rashes. So check on them regularly too. But how about the low level? They get easily upset by noises, the bright lights, the, the soiled diaper. What can you do? Grandparents, what do you normally do with this low level sensitivity threshold children? They get easily upset with many things around them. What can you do to help them? Any good tips to help one another, grandparents?
how can we help them to become less agitated? To, in, to increase their level of threshold to a little bit higher as they grow up. What can you do for them? You can attend to those reactions, but not try to change them too fast. Because when your diaper is sought, they want to be changed so that they can be comfortable. If the light is too bright, they can't sleep. So dim it down so that they are comfortable. Address how they feel so that their mood can turn from negative to positive too. How about children who are distractible easily? Very easy, especially this child starts to look at the things that catch their attention. Especially when they want to say goodbye to your mommy and daddy when the mommy and daddy needs to go to work. Give them a toy and they'll forget about your mommy and daddy going to work. They tend to be distracted easily when they get older too. For the older children, that's not a very good sign. But what can you do? You can observe and help the children to stay on task. Especially when they move from one activity to another activity. Work alongside with them, help them to finish their task and teach them the value of perseverance. And how easily about those low level ones? They are not easily distracted. They are very focused. They tend to stick to an activity. Is this also a problem? Yes, it can be sometimes. But a child will do the activity again and again and again and again. And when you give a new activity, they wouldn't want to even attempt. So same thing, you can work alongside with them and introduce some new activity so that they can play a variety of activities. And when you have, when you have many grandchildren, they can learn to exchange activity better. Right? All these are the different temperament traits of an infant and toddler. And we classify them under three major temperament patterns. Okay. These three major temperament patterns are flexible, fearful, and feisty temperament. They are very useful to know and they provide effective care for, your, for the children, but they do not tell the whole story actually. Children are wonderfully, specially made with their own talent and their own temperament. And they can come with a mixture. Flexible, 40%, fearful, 15%, feisty, 10%. And they don't add up to 100%. Because there's a mixture, some of them can be flexible and fearful, some of them can be fearful and feisty as well. So as you get to know each individual or child, you can then work with them easily by deploying certain techniques in your caregiving time with them, especially the flexible temperament children. They are the most neglected one, I must say. Check in regularly with them. Set aside special time with these flexible children, which is very important because they are so flexible, they are easy to manage. Parents who have many children tends to neglect them. Give them this special attention. The fearful child, draw the child slowly, allow independence to unfold slowly. Let them adjust to those things that they are not used to it and slowly make them feel comfortable. The feisty temperament, 
use the redirection as what some grandparents said, distract them with some activities, negotiate with them, be flexible with this group of children, prepare the child for the change. If you want to move from one area to another area, give them the time. For example, okay, uh, Natalie, after we have our breakfast, we are going to take a shower. Okay, prepare them in advance. Make the most of the quiet moments and tell them how much you like that quiet time. You enjoy that quiet time with them, especially during maybe the reading time. Tell them stories and get their nerves calm down as often as possible. And tell them how much you appreciate this quiet moment with them. And provide vigorous play. It's just now what some of the grandparents say. You need to provide some vigorous play so that you can experience their energy away. Now, to respond to inf infant and to respond to infant and toddler, what you need to do is also watch, ask, and adapt. How do you watch? Begin by just watching, not rushing to do things for the baby or the toddler. Watch for both verbal and non-verbal cues. And this is very important because as you watch them, you were able to deploy the right technique to handle their behavior. Then you ask, ask who? Ask yourself, what message is the child sending me that I need to know? Does the child want something from me? Is there something that I don't know? And then observe again to see what the child wants. And then you adapt. You adapt your action according to what you believe to be the child's desire. Observe the child's responses. Then you modify your action if you need to be, which is very important. Because as you modify, then you'll be able to adjust your, your own positive attitude as well. And when you adjust your action, you will adjust your behavior towards your grandchildren's action. So that will help each other to maintain the calmness. Right? Well, all this temperament attribute may become either an asset or liability to a child. Development largely depends on how we as caregiver respond to all, to all their actions and their behavior. And if we know how to respond to them positively, they will appreciate us better. Having an appreciation of a children's temperament make it possible to use the knowledge to help us and help the children to grow in a socially adaptive, adaptable and welcoming way, both at home and next time in school. So this technique of watch, ask and adapt is very important. Practice this often so that you'll be able to enjoy your grandchildren better. Now we come to the Q&A session. If you have any question, you can write down or can cut on the Facebook comment so that we can have some time to explore together. And I believe that a lot of grandparents have answers to the question too. Are the percentages for flexible, fearful, and 5C temperament always the same? No, the answer is no. 
Why do I say so? Because if you have actually able to make your approach a positive one, children who are feisty, children who are so-called uh, slow to warm up, will be sometimes eventually become more flexible and less feisty. And they have a mixed temperament as well. They can be flexible, more flexible, or more feisty. That depends on us. So if you do a good job, we will have more percentage on the flexible side in times to come. And we are all made differently. So different time as we approach the children differently and we know the right technique, we can help them to become better. What about kids that cannot stop playing her iPad? What should I do? Well, these children, just now they said, right? They, they can focus on the time. Well, there's a time that you have to negotiate with your grandchildren and sort out first when they throw out a temperament, when they throw out their temper to you and they insist of playing their iPad again for a long period of time. Before you start something with them, tell them that what are the rules that you want them to adhere to. Negotiate with them and help them to sort out their emotion after that. If you're going to take up, if you're going to take away their iPad time. Are there any tips to bond with grandchildren that don't stay with you? This period of time, have a Zoom session with your grandchildren. This is what I did for my, for my parents. I gather all the grandchildren, we lock in together and have some Zoom time together. So when you play with your grand, grandchildren, look at the way or what they like to play as well. If you don't stay with them, when you, when you visit them or when they visit you, that is time. Remember the trade technique that I, I shared? Watch, ask, and adapt. And after a while, you will know and have great fun with your grandchildren. How to deal with children who are glued to devices and make a fuss or be sad when the devices is taken away, even after giving them alternative activity? If they make a fuss or they are sad, sit next to them. Sort out their emotion. Let them cry if they, need, if they want to. You see, you know, I understand that you are very sad, that the iPad time is over. Yeah, it's okay to feel sad. It's, also, it's okay to feel angry. Just sit down with them until they are calm. And the key is be patient. They will be calm as long as you maintain your calmness. Okay? I love your talk. How to build bond with adult grandchildren who is not staying with you all the time? Adult grandchildren, much more easier, isn't it? Some time with them. My parents have a lot of adult grandchildren. What they do is just spend time with them, telling stories, playing mahjong. And have a lot of even some games to play with together with your adult grandchildren. Just now we talk about how we can update ourselves to know how our grandchildren learn and play, to play along with them so that you can connect into their world. What, what the games that we learned in the past, 
might not work now. So ask them, what are the games? Ask them to teach you. And we come with a posture of a student to learn from them. Okay? How to stay focused, flexible, firm and friendly when you are exhausted. Grandparents, take a break. Take a break, it's very important. Again, as we take a break, we'll be able to stay, stay focused and, have a and be flexible because we will reflect. As we reflect more, we will be able to modify our actions and our attitudes will turn from negative to positive. Can advise how to stop a 90 months old to stop hitting his forehead on the ground. The more the caregiver try to stop him, the more he will knock his head. Okay. For this kind of children, just be calm. I know that it's very hard ache to see the grandchildren knocking onto the, on the head onto the floor. But the more we tell him not to do so, the more he will hit harder to catch your attention. Sit down, wait for him to stop. Then sort out the emotion again and acknowledge how he or she feel that he will be See, very angry, very sad that he never gets his toys. And how can you negotiate with him? How to, how to help him to comb up, to sort out all his emotions so that the next time it become better for him to manage his behavior. And after that, so is it painful? It must be very painful for you. It hurts me too to see your head knocking onto the floor. Show your empathy rather than to say, yeah, not harder. Since you like to knock, continue. Or you say, no, it's painful, stop. Knocking your head on the floor, it won't work. Because what he, what he or she hear is only knocking the head. And he or, he or she will continue to knock the head. Just become be patient, give him time to sort out his own emotion and talk to that 19 month old. They can listen as long as we are patient. How to keep, how to keep the kid concentrate on what they are doing, like study. Now we know that some children are distracted easily. We know that they, they tend to not able to concentrate on the work. So before they start their homework, ask them, how much do, do they think that they can finish? And sort it up together with them. And when they commit the amount of work that they will want to do, and then ask them, so how much time do you think that you can complete all this homework. Let them have the say. Once they commit what they can do, the chances of them doing it successfully on task is much, much higher. So that will be a time, that will be a time of questioning and answer. So give your children the autonomy to decide how much homework they want to finish for the day and what they can do. Set a time for them so that they will be able to enjoy their homework better. I know that during this COVID-19, the school has sent them lots of homework to do. And if a child has always drawn with all the homework and no play. 
they will get very frustrated too. Sometimes they will drag and they get very upset with you when they have no play at all. My grandchild will not accept the experience that I share. I feel so upset. Any tips? When your grandchildren do not accept your experience that you share, Grandparents, I feel you. I know that you know you have a lot of uh, so-called experience. But to them, they want to try. They want to know what else can they do. When all things don't work, trust me, they might even secretly do your work, do what you advise them to do. Your experience do count, but because they are of different makeup, so they want they 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 want to know what other ways beside what my agong tell me. What other way beside what my papa tell me? Maybe my agong and papa are old fashioned. You know, I don't want to listen to them. You'll be surprised. Sometimes you need not use your own voice. You can say, someone actually tell me this. Last time I used to do this in this manner, but I'm not sure, you know, boy, whether this work. By showing to by showing your grand uh, children that you are not the Mister Know All or Mrs. Know All, we are all learning together. Then we will feel good. Then we'll be very happy to learn together. Thank you for all your question, grandparents. I really enjoy truly having this session with all of you. Today, really, it gives me great pleasure to share with you all these tips, and I learned a lot from you too. Now, if you find our talk useful, do like and share the video with your family and friends to help them pick up these useful tips at their own pace and convenience. If you want to learn more about childcare skills for grandparents and senior and other NSA courses by SAIS, you can contact 62660648. Thank you once again, grandparents. Have a great day ahead. Goodbye. Stay tuned for the next session of the NSA eNugget series, which goes live every Tuesday and Friday at 2 p.m. on C3A's Facebook page. You can check out the talk schedule at www.c3a.org.sg and for more resources on how you can age well. For more inquiries, you can call 6478 5026. Thanks for watching. See you soon.